Well, I'll give this little cookie an hour before we're doing the no pants dance. <laughs> Time to musk up. Before the no pants dance, we're gonna check out a couple few things. So here, get the got the condenser fan motor, brand new tower. It's been ramping up uh, not off of T stat lately for the last month because the drive didn't come in. So brand new, shiny. So today we just came back, me and the goat man came back to install the drive just to finish the install. Put in some temporary drop leg sensors, got to secure more properly than just red tape. And all this to cool down the racks for the store. One, two, three. It's all these racks going through the EVAP condenser right here. And today we're just going to make it wrap properly. Not going to be going through the programming, it's just a little bit of the wiring. And here you got the switch to just put it in bypass 100% or put it in the drive, which is in the drive right now. It's ramping. I'm not sure what the speed is on it right now. It's 30, so halfway. It's programmed for 60 hertz, so it's just ramping halfway right now. This is 50%, so when you go to bypass and do 100%, you'll see it right now. And there you go, 100%. So in this video, we're just going to be going through a couple things, uh, basic stuff, not the entire thing. So let's get into it. So when you first turn on this drive, you're going to have an alarm. It's always alarm external fault. So you have to go in there, either remove it or put a jumper for it. But for the programming, you have to put the correct information of the motor. So the information that you truly need is the horsepower, the RPMs, the hertz, and the amps. All that has to be correctly so it can ramp properly. If the motor info is incorrect, sometimes it doesn't ramp like it should be ramping properly. Wow. Never ceases to amaze me. The no pants stance. So now that the pants are off, the first thing you want to check is the running able 12 and 18. When it's closed and it's reading 0 DC, the VSD is ready to ramp. When you see it open, it's reading like 24 DC, then that's something else is keeping it off, like the program is not calling for it. But when it is calling for it and you get zero, that's when you check your speed reference, 53 and 55. It is polarity sensitive, so if it's not calling for it or you get voltage and it's not ramping, then just switch the wires. And it goes from uh, zero to 10. Since the motor is 60 hertz, if you get one DC, it's gonna be six, two, it's gonna be 12. Once you reach to 10, which is 100%, you're gonna get full 60 hertz of the motor going. So again, 53 and 55 are your speed reference, 12 and 18 are your running able. And at the very bottom, it's going to see your relay for your fault. So when the drive goes into alarm, it'll close these points right here. If it's programmed correctly, it'll put the tower into bypass. But if you see two contactors, VSD and bypass, don't ever push them together when one's closed. Okay? Don't ever, 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 ever. I've never done it myself, but I hear when you do it, this thing blows off the wall like bad. So be safe, man, this is 460. So you get the power coming into the drive, power going out to the evap and it's a fan motor. Depending on what it's ramping, the voltage will be different. Right now we'll go through it and I'll show you. So it's calling for 28. So here, 464 volts, 468, 69, 1 and 3, 467, 66. It has big time voltage, so. And here we go, 136, 139, going to the motor, 1 and 2. 139, 142. So yeah, this is going out to the motor. That's why it's ramping at that speed, 27 hertz right now. And now to show you the readings of the run enable. So 12 and 18, I'll put it up in the screen again. So when it's closed and reading zero, it's ready to ramp. It's calling like, hey, I just need my speed reference. When it's open, it's not calling for it. The controller's keeping it off or it doesn't really need it at the moment. So right here, it's ramping, it's calling at zero. So we're gonna take it out of the drive and I'm gonna put it in bypass so you can see it open. So this baby's gonna ramp up, there you go, 100%. So the drive is not calling to be on now because I'm in bypass going off the contactor. So it's ramping down right now. 
and the readings now should be open 23 DC there you go it's open it's not calling for it. so when you get this reading the drives not calling to be on so that's why it's not ramping in that closure we're usually getting it from the inverter contactor on the auxiliaries so when that contactor pulls in on the auxiliary it closes and it gives a signal to the drive like hey i'm ready we're on enable it's on what's my speed reference so right now it's 23 so the drive knows hey i'm not calling to be on just completely go down to zero and you're not ready to ramp so right now we're going to put it back to the drive back and drive so the time delay is going to keep it off for a minute or so see back down So we're just going to wait right now. So still 23. So once the inverter contactor pulls in, it's going to close 12 and 18. And it's going to start to ramp. There you go. So contactor pulled in for the inverter contactor. Now it's telling it, hey, I'm ready to ramp. What's my speed reference? So right now 30. Most likely I got 5 DC at 53 and 55. And to check the DC at 53 and 55. There you go, showing the screen again. So right now, 5 DC, midpoint. I'm just going to show you the different readings right now. So 3 DC is 18, 24, 40%, so that's going to be about 4. There you go. And right now I'm making it ramp up to 100%, so you can see how it jumps and it starts to ramp up all the way. nine all the way up to a hundred percent which would be 60 hertz the full motor capacity which that's what we program into the drive because we're saying the motor is 60 hertz 100 percent that's what it is so how do we do it what well, we tell a percentage to ramp up zero to ten so a couple things the machine room we got a humidity sensor and a temp sensor we put it in a wet bulb calculation so once we have the wet bulb we grab that and we also get the max drop leg. Some people use temps, some people use pressures, converted, or just the pressure of the drop legs. We put it in a combiner and we always get the highest value. So out of all four, whichever is the highest, we use that one. After that, we get the TD between the wet bulb and the max drop leg. So whatever you're programming to. Let's just say you're programming for 20. So the TD is programmed for 20. The wet bulb is at 55. The mass drop leg is at 80. That's a TD of 25. So the VSD will ramp up to 100% to get it back down to 20 TD. If it's lower, like the wet bulb is at 55 and the max drop leg is at 70, that's a TD of 15. So it's going to go to zero, make it higher, go back up to 20. So it'll ramp up and down to keep it at that set point of 20. But there's a lot of programming behind that. It takes some time. You gotta do combiners and the web bulb calculation. You gotta put the bypass in there. There's a lot of interlocks in there so both contactors don't pull in. Because like I said earlier, if they both pull in at the same time, it's gonna blow up. It's a lot of programming. A lot of people get stuck at the drive programming. So it takes a lot of years to kind of get used to it and comfortable. But before the programming, then you have to learn the wiring. The wiring is a whole new thing. You have to learn how to wire them first with the bypass and the inverter so they interlock and people get stuck there before the program. So yeah, the drive is a big deal. People, A lot of the people in the supermarkets get stuck in the, this level of drive, programming, wiring, but it's good stuff though. But I just wanted to show some of the basics in the video, what to check, run, enable, speed reference. So when you're troubleshooting, go to a store, just give you some basics what to look for. But if you watch the video and learn something, they've done studies, you know. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. But it will one day. So, if you like the video, subscribe, like, leave a comment, and uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps out.